So how do you go about networking and creating relationships? I know we, we talked on your podcast, you know, about like the number one key to, you know, networking is providing value, right? It's, it's a relationship. There, there's a give and there's a take. And if you expect someone to give, you got to give just as much in return. But, you know, part of that process is like, you know, when you're reaching out to these people, how do you determine, you know, how to provide them value? Uh, so for me now, if, for example, if I wanted to have someone that's, I would consider a, like a fantastic, harder to reach guest on the show, for example, mm -hmm. on, on my podcast and YouTube channel, yeah. the way that I would be providing them value is I would make sure to emphasize in my email to them, Hey, I have, you know, 17,000 subscribers and I have this many listeners and it's in this niche that you're in and you'll, you'll probably get some kind of audience some portion of my audience will go check out your stuff. Um, so for them, it's, it's free exposure. Now that's hard to do. This is the whole like chicken before the egg situation mm -hmm. where if you don't have an audience. How the hell do you leverage an audience? Um, so I think for, for those people, you have to be a little more creative. And um, I, I talked on my show uh, last week that I, I had on Matt Pelosi from Cyber PR. And he told me that the way he got into working at Cyber PR, and if you don't know what Cyber PR is, they're like a pretty well-known music PR agency and their, their owner is like pretty well-known. She's written books on marketing and PR and stuff like that. And he wanted to work for it because she's kind of like legendary in that realm. So he messaged them and said, I will work for free if you just teach me what you know. Uh, that might not be for everyone, but like, that's a pretty damn good value. You're saying I'll work for you for like free for 10 hours a week or whatever. Yeah. Um, and if you're a musician and maybe you're trying to sell beats, like maybe you can find some mid tier rappers and you could offer mm -hmm. them some free beats in exchange for shout outs and credits. If you're a rapper, um, I guess that's a little more creative. You might find a producer that's just a little bit above you. You know, don't shoot for, I don't know. I don't know. Don't shoot for marshmallow or flume or something. Shoot for, <laughs> shoot for someone. Like if you're at a thousand monthly listeners, shoot for someone with 10,000 monthly listeners and say, Hey, mm -hmm. I know you have a bigger audience, but you know, my audience isn't too much smaller and maybe they're really engaged in one platform and maybe you have a bigger Instagram following than they do, even though they're much bigger than you on Spotify. Yeah. So even if you're small, you, you still have more leverage than, than you think, even, even just ignoring the whole, like, Oh, I'll make some artwork for you. Oh, I'll, I'll pay you. Those kind of things. Like try to just try to like maybe shrink your expectations at first about who you can get, but you can, you can come up with a way to convince a lot of people. I think. Yeah. I mean, and, and when you initially hit me up, like you gave me a, a pretty great value proposition. We talked about this in, on our episode of my yeah. channel. You know, you're like, Hey, I, I have some friends. We're doing great on TikTok, and I'm doing decent on TikTok too and I'm cranking out this music and I'm doing all this stuff and you're doing this stuff and I want to learn that and we can kind of all learn from each other yeah well that that's something I've been super I, I've been toying around with a lot with is you know understanding this concept of how valuable increasing your network is like one of the qu quickest way to like grow your success and c create momentum is who is in your network right? And it's very easy to grow your network. No matter what it is that you want to do, it's as simple as going on Google, going on YouTube, going on Instagram, looking up whatever the person you want in your network is, whether that's you know someone who's good with finances or someone in health or marketing, whatever it is. And you literally just go to them and you, you look at like, what do they need? Right? And sometimes I just ask them. <laughs> it's like what yeah, do you need it's it's nice to know that like if someone has a question for me that is like in the pr world yeah. i can just shoot a message to matt pelosi who i talked yeah. to last week and it's nice to know that if i'm having trouble with my mixing or mastering i have my friend jerry mm -hmm. and if he has questions with marketing he knows he has me and if i have questions with uh you know for example e-commerce you have a lot of experience in that so it, it's yeah it's very handy to build up your, your network in a million ways. Like aside from the fact that you like, you develop actual like friendships and stuff from this, yeah. you can talk to it's, it's pretty, pretty valuable. Even if you're not 
making a relationship with like little Drake or something. Like it's, yeah. Well, you also don't know where that person's going to be. Like, for example, um, I was, when I was like 19, I went to this e-commerce conference and I met this couple and, you know, it was, this was for Amazon. Like, this is completely different from music. Like, this has nothing to do with music. And, uh, like, they were super nice, like, befriended them. You know, I was in Austin, Texas for the weekend, you know, hung out with them a couple of times. And, you know, they, like, they made an offhanded comment about, like, oh, you should collab with our daughter. And I was like, oh, yeah, sure. Like, it never really turned into anything. And they're, you know, I'm 19. Their daughter's, like, 12 at the time. So I'm not really thinking much about it. And then, you know, she's like a beast with her content. Like she's consistently putting out stuff every week on YouTube. Like it's got to be nice not having to work a job. That, that's got to make it easier to put out content. But I digress. Like she's killing it. Props to her. And, you know, randomly one of her videos gets discovered by Shane Dawson. And, you know, next thing you know, she's literally doing a video with Shane Dawson. And like overnight, she's getting like hundreds of thousands of subscribers. And then, yeah. outs- and then outside of that, she went on to America's Got Talent. And she actually got the golden buzzer on America's Got Talent. Her name's uh, Sophie Picora, by the way, if anyone wants to check her out. She's killing it. Um, and, like, now she's, like, established in the industry. And, like, what's crazy is, like, I found out about her when she had, like, a 1,000 subscribers. And, you know, that never really cultivated anything. I still talk with her mom. But, like, like still you 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 never know where someone's going to end up so yeah. you invest in these relationships and especially when you're investing with people that are serious right people that aren't just trying yeah. to flex like they're doing this because they legitimately love it and they're trying to make a career out of it like you don't know where they're going to be in five years and as yeah, long as yeah go it's, ahead. it's funny you brought that so i was talking to a rapper i don't know if you saw this video of mine um the rapper called young l3x or young Lex. yeah he's actually my next episode I had him on oh, right, yeah. a couple days yeah. ago. <laughs> so he, he's, 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 like, he's an awesome man. And it's cool yeah. because like, he has like 300,000 monthly listeners. And like, he's, make, he's getting a lot of volume and streams. He's making a living off of his streaming revenue, which is, which mm-hmm. is nuts, right? And you're talking to him, and he's so humble about it. It's almost like he doesn't even know. Like no one's told yeah. him. Yet, so. <laughs> um, and uh, if I go to like, his top song, like, he's collaborating with someone who like, I've never heard of because I'm not big in like, the, the hip-hop world called Joyner Lucas. Dude, how do you not know Joyner? That's what every, all the comments in the video is like, you don't know Joyner Lucas? But it, anyway, so <laughs> I'm talking to him. I'm like, how did you pull this collab off? And he's, he's telling me that like, well, it was like, you know, it was 2016. He was also a Boston-based uh, hip-hop artist. Mm-hmm. And they were both kind of like in the same ballpark of um, audience size at the time, I mm-hmm. guess. And he just collabed with them because he was like, well, he's a local artist in my same niche who I, you know, thinks a cool dude. Yeah. And what happened is later on, that guy just kind of popped. <laughs> right. Yeah. And. Oh, he popped. <laughs> he popped. Right? I mean, he's got 9 million or something monthly listeners, that guy, Jordan Lucas. And, uh, you know, you never know when that's going to happen. So it's, yeah. it's, it's always good to be a little more open, I think, than closed with collaborations. Like, yeah it's better to collaborate with someone who, who won't do you any good than it is to not collaborate with someone who might blow up. <laughs> yeah. Well, plus you're, you're getting the reps in, right? Like, and, and you're developing that relationship, like coming back to, you know, what we talked about like the networking, like it's not just who, you know, it's who they know. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, the way I see it is every time I collab with someone, we now have an invested interest to help each other. Because if that person blows up, we make money from that. So if I have a legitimate reason I need someone in my circle and someone in my circle has someone in their circle that can help me, they're going to be like, of course. Because yeah. if I blow up tomorrow and then they have a song with me, that could lead to them you know, making money from that. Plus right. just going through the process of making a song with someone like, you you develop a stronger relationship because that's like that's a whole process but that could be in anything that's not just music that could be any whatever you're doing you know what i mean yeah and that whole it's definitely true that the act of collaborating with someone is kind of like a almost like a friendship building activity yeah Yeah. (laughs) because uh 
you know, you, you, you meet someone and like, you might talk a little bit, but when you're writing a song with someone, like mm-hmm. you kind of need to know both, you need to know what the song's about. So you kind of get into that person's yeah. headspace and you're go- bouncing back ideas and you have to be very open with them. Like you have to be able to tell this person, I don't like this idea. I do look like this idea. And it's um, most of my friends that I talk to on a regular basis are ended up being musicians because mm-hmm this might sound weird to say, but it's because there's like a reason to keep, keep talking with them on a regular basis where I bet if you think back to your like high school friends, how many of them do you really talk to? Probably. Oh yeah. Not probably only a few. I mean, in my case, the only ones I talk to are the ones that I continue to do the music with. (laughs) um, Even if you have like a good relationship with them and they, your friends, like as you get older, you just, have more obligations and like when you really invest in like building your career naturally your entire life gets encompassed by that so people that aren't in that field tend to you know get put on the back burner because you know like at least for me like i work from 7 a.m to 9 p.m six days a week Yeah, like that is a large period where i'm not talking or hanging with my friends and you know that's because i love what i do but a big breakthrough I had on the podcast I released uh, today actually was, you know, we were talking about from the health perspective, like, you know, how you become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And, you know, it all, that quote always gives me anxiety because I look at a lot of people in my life and I'm like, like, I don't want to be the average of you. And, you know, a big breakthrough I had is, you know, I realized instead of stressing about cutting out the wrong people, instead, just focus on adding the right people. And then that shift will just happen organically. You know what I mean? You don't even have to try. It'll just, it'll just happen naturally. And in, right. it, it doesn't create this painful subtraction. You're, instead, you're focused on an exciting addition. And that, that could go the same for your ad dollars too, right? Like people are so focused on the money they're losing that they forget about the new fans they're gaining. Yeah, no, I, it's hundred percent. Like I see a lot of people online saying like, Oh, I gotta, I gotta cut this negativity out of my life. Like referring to people, you know, that mm-hmm. they know. Um, and it happens a lot with music people because they're like, well, I have a lot of friends who don't support what I do. Or I have a lot of family members that don't support what I do. And they tend to focus a lot on exactly what you said. How do I cut these people out of my life to avoid the negativity? But I don't know. I mean, I, I've never really, done that it's just kind of like i don't know don't focus on that negativity and just add more people that do support what you do because they're also doing what you do you know yeah. and the internet's a great thing you know it's we would have never met if it weren't for the internet yeah <laughs> me and almost every music person i know would have never met if it wasn't yeah. for the internet so you might think that you don't know anyone that relates to you and does what you do but like there's a community of people that are doing what you do online you just gotta mm-hmm you to find them and add them to your life and, and find ways that you can kind of like, you know, develop a kind of weird online relationship and, yeah. and yeah, provide well, value. It's crazy. Some of my closest friends I've never even met in person. <laughs> right. Cause it's just, we like, like we just are interested in the same thing and just through the power of, you know, social media got, introduced to each other and then we have such similar lifestyles through just those algorithms matching us up through whatever interest we had that it, it just like it's so much more it just happens so naturally <laughs> yeah I like my, my friend jerry uh that's you know he's coming from mm-hmm. the channel a few times but he him and i only met once at nam because we both mm-hmm. happened to be going yeah. there i was going there because like my I, my company's registered as a nam company yeah. and he was going there to like teach a, a session they have and but like aside from that we never met and but we talk like i don't know like four or five days a week we'll send texts back and forth and we do weekly webcam chats and we live in completely different states so it's you never you never know like there's always someone out there that's going to resonate with you and when i first talked to tom dupree who i had in the show he was like man it was so great to to talk to you finally because i've been doing this youtube thing for a while and i've never met anyone else that does youtube as a music creator <laughs> and it's like man that's that's that really sums it up because it's it, what we do is weird to, to if you look at the people you know in real life but mm-hmm. 
if you just look out just like a little bit, there's thousands of us online. Yeah. You just got to like take the initiative and reach out. That's, that's so true. Like when you say it's like, you know, I don't, I didn't, to me, it didn't even cross my mind as being weird because I just have become so encompassed in this world, but you're kind of right. Like if I think about the people around me, like most people aren't doing this type of stuff. Right. I, I don't know a single person in, in my real like day to day physical life <laughs> that has a YouTube channel. Yeah. Do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> so it's, so yeah. basically what that means is that's probably typical for most people who do uh, do this type of stuff, whether it's YouTube yeah. or, or music. And uh, we're kind of like the weirdos. But uh, if, if you look online, it's like there's still tens of thousands of us. So yeah. 